Right, so you're welcome to another episode of GH Movie Freaks Hot Take with Tony and Sankuma. And yeah, yeah, like you already know, with this particular show, I just react to interesting or conversation-worthy topics that I've seen over the internet. And uh, today I've seen something that really piqued my interest, a subject that I'm very, very, like, um, interested in. Um, but before we dive into it, don't forget to hit the subscription button if you already haven't subscribed to this channel um if you're a fan of this channel also i would encourage you to please share this video drop a comment let me know your thoughts on my hot take and even your thoughts on what i'm reacting to as well um let's let's just make this a family let's make this a conversation let's just share ideas let us go this channel as well um but please do hit the notification bell as well so that you get updates on any contents that I put on this channel as well. Before I go into the hot take too, let me just give a big shout out to uh, my man, Mano. Uh, he gifted me this Arsenal jersey. Um, he heard I'm an Arsenal fan, so he gifted me this replica jersey and I'm very appreciative of it. I hope we win the APL this year. Anyway, so let's just dive right into this hot take. Um, this is a... This is a post I saw on um, the Facebook wall of Ghanaian filmmaker. Well, she's Ghanaian, but she's not based in Ghana often. Um, yeah, let me put it that way. She's not based in Ghana often, but she's Ghanaian, and she's a film writer, director, producer, Leila Jansi. And she says, Dear Ghanaian filmmakers, stop doing premiering, please. A premiere it's really just a day for glamour and fanfare. Honestly, you don't need it. The real economy is your release. Focus on the days of release after the premiere. Promote that. Premiere a week before the release and spend the week using reviews, reactions, and the excitement to push your release date. This keeps your film in the cinema for longer, which translates into money. <laughs> and then she adds, not really, the cinema takes all, but it still would drive your ancillaries. And she adds, should I say a, a, a smiling, <laughs> a, a grinning emoji? Um, yeah, um, like I said earlier on, this is a conversation, this is something that is very like dear to my heart because it's something I've spoken about countless times and particularly in a very, in a very famous um article that I wrote seven years ago. I like to call it one of one of the pieces that kind of like broke me out there or kind of like put my name in certain conversations and opened certain doors for me. So I sort of like always like hold that particular piece in a certain regard because I mean, most people didn't even know me till, um, <laughs> most people didn't even know me till, know about me and what I do till that particular article came out. And it's sort of, ties into what Leila is talking about. Um, yeah. And it's called the Akramo mentality, why our films don't sell. I've always maintained that we seem to be having this, when I say we, I'm talking about the Ghanaian filmmakers, we seem to be having this mentality that is focusing on premiers. And I used Akramo mentality or the Akramo as um, the symbol for the whole idea of premiering. If you know the Ghanaian space, you know that for a very long time, the only, should I say, cinema or place for most premieres was the Silver Bed Cinemas at the Accra Mall. And this was an article I wrote seven years ago where you were sort of in the peak of an era where every Ghanaian filmmaker was looking at premiering their film or going to the Accra Mall to organize a premiere. And I wrote this particular article pointing out some of the things that I felt were um a hindrance for our films to be sold to be sold or to do well in general and i was tying it into that mentality that most of our pre uh, most of our film producers are looking at that one night where they feel like okay let me put out let me do everything to make that night brilliant let me do everything to make that people show up for that night and then after that night crickets they they just forget about selling the film or they forget about doing anything to help promote the film and that is the Accra Mall mentality and that's exactly what Leila Jansi is also talking about in the post that I shared with you or I just read with you. I think 
it is important that we have this conversation. It's important that we continue to look at this subject because it's become a bane. It's become something that's very like, very, very, very serious when you come when it comes to the Ghanaian film industry. I feel like we we can't. It's a conversation that's not going to die out anytime soon because it's a conversation that's it's something that's reoccurring, something that's always going on, and we owe we owe ourselves a duty to have this conversation, right? The Accra Mall mentality. Why the Accra Mall mentality? Why are producers always looking at the premier night? And what Leila is saying, if you're not getting it, let me put, let me try and put it in a uh, in a context that most people would understand. We always talk about marriage, right? And and wedding ceremonies. And there's usually always an argument that you should focus on the actual marriage and not the wedding ceremony. And it makes a lot of sense because when you think about it, the wedding is just an event, right? It's just it's just a one-day event, probably worst case scenario. Well, not worst case, but in some scenarios, it could be maybe a three-day event, right? And after the wedding ceremony, that is when you get into the marriage proper. So if you focus all your attention on the wedding, what happens to the marriage? And that's what Leila is trying to talk about here. She's saying that if you focus so much on your premiere, what then happens to after the premiere, which is the actual release of the film? And that's true. You know, I've been saying this for years. A lot of effort, particularly from our producers, is targeted at the premiere night. I've seen uh, uh, marketing budgets that focus so much on just the premiere night to the point where you would have producers put up let's say 10 or 15 billboards in town and on the billboard uh like the premier night dates boldly written on it and it's like all the traffic is being directed towards the premier night only and after that premier night nothing is done to essentially help sell the film and that is why we are here i feel like we need to con continue to have this conversation it's like there are several factors i can agree that cause producers to feel this way about marketing or promoting their films beyond the premier night, right? I've done some soul searching. I've thought hard about this. And I feel like one of the reasons is that they do not have enough faith in their films. Yes, I feel like most of these producers do not have the faith in their films being good enough to sell past the premier night. So what they do is they promote all that they can to make sure that they have what they term a sold out premiere. And after the premier, ah... Uh, they feel like okay they've done it i've achieved what i can achieve and then they, they they just leave everything to be which is sad because if you don't have faith in your product or in your film why else are you releasing it or why are you trying to make money out of it right some of them know very well too that the film is not that good right so they are going to do everything that they can do deploy all kinds of tactics all kinds of sensationalism all, all kinds of controversies to draw attention to the premiere night and then after the premiere night when people come to see the film and they know that film is not good then they are like ah let me not bother pr promoting it any further and then later they turn around and <laughs> blame the industry or say the industry is not thriving but what Leila is saying is very very important that we pay attention to right because again the premiere night is usually like she mentioned the nights for all the the pageantry for all the you know, the, the glitz and glamour of releasing a film, right? That's where you have all the stars come out. And in many cases, all these people that you see, well, most of the people that you see at a film premiere are people that are invited, are not people that have purchased tickets. It's usually the cast and crew and their family and friends, right? And a few people who might show up because they want to, you know, take pictures with the stars or, or, or are so excited about watching the film before anyone else. So they show up at the, at the premiere. But majority of the people that show up at premieres are invited people. And when you do the math, you realize that if the hall is about, I mean, if, if the hall is about 500, 500 seats, right? And you are even doing two showings, it might turn out that, so let's say that's, thousand people that you're expecting. It might turn out that 500 of those thousand people are actually people that are either directly affiliated to the film or indirectly because they might be personal, you know, friends or family of the cast and crew. So they will not buy tickets or they will be expecting to get a free ticket to be at these premieres. 
So how does that translate to money for the producer? But in many cases also, the producers are just excited with the idea of having a, a, a full house where they can take pictures and post on social media and say sold out. When in, in fact, we know that most of the people that showed up didn't buy tickets. So what did you sell? Or you reserved 100 tickets and <laughs> all that, hand, like you reserved uh, 100, 100 tickets for seats to be sold and all those 100 seats were sold. So you consider it a sold out premiere, creating the optics that they might be doing well or the film might be doing well, when in actual fact, it isn't. And this is why we need to have this conversation. I think it's very important that we start paying attention to this because it's become a very big problem for our industry. I think, like I mentioned, I've seen production, well, not production budgets, marketing budgets where the focus is 10 billboards, um, pay for this radio and TV platform, pay for this, do this, do this, do this. And all that is targeted at that premium night. Why? In some cases, some producers are fortunate enough, I won't say fortunate, but they are strategic enough to pick a holiday, a public holiday for their premiere because they know that, okay, people are free on that day, so they'll promote heavily that particular holiday or that particular premiere to get people to show up, and then they forget about promoting the other days, and that goes to the disadvantage of the film. It's like, what are you doing? What, why is, what is the obsession with the premiere night? Personally, I've been to some premieres that I would only be there because, well, maybe I've been, um, I consider it as work because I need to be there on the premiere night to watch the film, to write a review about it, or I just want to see the film. And you get to some of these premieres, they are so crowded, you think that this is the best film that has come out within the year. And then the following Monday, you go to the cinema and the place is virtually empty because nothing has been done about promoting the film beyond that premiere night. And it's sad. It's, it's very confusing because some people even think that the average the average audience, some of the average audience actually think that the films only are in the cinemas for just that night. Well, in some cases, even that is the case. And that brings me to another reason why this is happening. Some of the producers who tell you the reason why they focus on just the premiere night is because of the business that happens with the cinema itself. Some will tell you, they are not able to secure multiple dates at the cinema or they went into some sort of, they, they couldn't go into partnership with the cinema so they had to rent the cinema for just that day. And so they would have to promote that day, make sure they get as many people to show up, make their money, <laughs> pay for the hall and then bounce, right? That's what some producers would tell you. But I believe that if you should think about, about it properly, if you have a good film, if you are confident in that film, and you are confident in your abilities to market and sell that film beyond the premiere night, the cinema will be willing to keep that film or would be willing to strike some form of partnership with you to allow you have that film in the cinema for much longer because they also stand to benefit. Even if the business is 70-30 or that is 70% going to the cinema and 30% going to you, that is still you making money out of the film. When you think about it that way, it means that you are just, you know, you are just, your job is to have enough confidence in the film to really help it sell, you know. But unfortunately, most of our producers don't think of it that way. They would rather blame the business behind the cinemas and say, oh, the cinema is not accommodating enough or the, the cinema is not partnering with me so I can only afford that particular night. So I pay for the hall for that day and I try to cram in as many people as I can take my money and bounce. And then what happens to the other people that couldn't make it? Personally, I've always enjoyed a viewing experience when the cinema is not crowded. Although there are some films that help, you know, the crowd at the cinema help in you enjoying the experience when you see people like actually reacting to the film in real time. But I've always enjoyed screenings where I'm a bit, well, less crowded, of course, and then there's not too much noise in the hall because I really want to pay attention to the film. So I would want to watch the film on maybe a Monday or a Tuesday or even a Wednesday. And I'm sure there are several people like that. But those people might go to Silver Bird Cinema and not even know about your film because you've done nothing to promote the film beyond the premiere. Okay, it's sad. I think a lot can be done. I, I also think one of the reasons why this happens is because 
most of our producers do not pay attention to the conversation that goes on about their films after the premiere. And Lila actually mentioned that in her post as well. Because, look, it makes sense for you to organize maybe a, a special screening, invite the people that you want to invite, make it intimate, make it personal, invite, of course, media people as well, invite critics, invite people that are influencers that go on social media and talk about stuff, pay them if you have to pay them, invite those people, let them come to a special screening, have them watch the film, and then that job is to go and spark conversation about the film. That job is to go online, talk about the film, be it good, be it bad, just to, to put that, that film in the trends or put that in people's minds and then direct people to go see the film within the week. How difficult is this? Like, think about it. Like, how difficult is this? Like, why would you go do a billboard that is targeted at just one day and forget about the other days? And that's, that's why I really like this post from Leila because we need to be intentional about some of these stuff. Organize a private screening. Have a few people there even. Maximum. You could, you could, you could say, okay, cast and crew. You are picking a day, cast and crew, and invite special guests or industry people or media people. Get them into a space. Get them to watch the film. Have a Q&A. You know, put certain information about the film in the minds of these people and then engage them or entreat them to go online or go wherever and talk about the film. How difficult is that? And not just talk about the film. Your job is to, whilst they are talking about that film, pick up, pick up on some of the conversations and, and rehash those conversations. If you have to pick someone's, uh, um, what's it called? If you have to pick someone's small review that will write on, on Facebook, which is not... Um, it's not even um, on, on, on their website even. Pick that, that review, do some artwork with it, and then sponsor it on Facebook so more people could see that so-and-so person says that they enjoyed your film and then they scored it 6 over 10 or 8 over 10 or they said this is the best film they've probably seen. And the way things work now, people would definitely bite onto these you know, feedback or these recommendations and would also want to show up at the cinema. How difficult is this? I, I, I feel like there's a tried and tested uh, 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 um, format that is used world over, but unfortunately, we are not paying attention to that here. We are only focused on the premiere night. We are all, only focused at, on, on taking those pictures with silver bed so choked that you could barely move, and then we post on social media that sold out. And I would ask myself, sold out, what did you sell out? What happened? Like... No one is talking about the film. Monday, no one is talking about the film. Wouldn't it be nice for you to premiere your film and then Monday, people are in their offices talking about, about your film? Like, people are actually having a conversation about your film. Like, people are like... And then one, one, um, one person bumps, joins the conversation and says, oh, I missed it. Let me go and watch it tonight or let me try and go and watch it tomorrow after work. Like, doesn't that make sense? But then again... Our producers are focused on the premiere night. I think we need to do more um, collectively as an industry. I think that we really need to pay attention to this. We really need to shake our mindsets, our mindsets of this idea of premiering and look at actually releasing the film and look at making sure that the film stays longer in cinemas. Forget about the business. The business would, you know, I mean, it's not forget about the business. Pay attention to the business because the cinema also is doing business. And they would love for your film to make money for them whilst it makes money for you. So, yeah, that's my hot take on the matter. Um, let me know your thoughts of, on this in the comment section below. Um, don't forget to like this channel, uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Uh, yeah, so this is the GH Movie Free Hot Take with Tony Asankoma. I'm out.